recommendation proposed commercial and recreational vehicle parking regulations. Uh, who, who brought this up? This is, uh, actually this is a staff uh, request uh, due to, we have received recently um, quite a number of complaints from the citizens regarding these types of vehicles in, in the community. And quite honestly, uh, we have code sections which contradict themselves currently. Uh, for instance, it's we, right as now. the residential districts in the zoning code, it clear, currently states that no commercial vehicles shall be parked or stored at a residential district. However, in the, for a home occupation, it does specify that a commercial vehicle can be stored at the residence. And in addition, there's no definition of what that commercial vehicle could be. So if it was a concrete contractor that had a home occupation, he could bring home a six-wheel bomber dump truck, or a six-wheel dump truck, whereas the HVAC, uh, a gentleman who, or lady who may work for an HVAC contractor who lives next door that is required to have a 24-hour service van couldn't bring that van home and park it on their driveway. Um, these inconsistencies have raised a lot of questions as to are we enforcing the codes uniformly and are we enforcing them fairly? Uh, what we're suggesting to try and alleviate some of this is to amend the zoning code. Uh, if you choose to go along this, we would schedule an appropriate hearing before the Zoning Board of Appeals to discuss some amendments to the zoning code which would address these concerns which we believe fairly, uh, would, would fairly um, treat all vehicles across the community. Uh, a, a sample language is, is, is with you that the language there is not really to be for debate tonight per se, it's to give a, a starting point, an idea, a concept. If you agree with the concept, as I said, we will get it scheduled in front of the next appropriate, or next available zoning board hearing, which would be July 21st. At the zoning board hearing, they would we would then discuss the text in more detail and then send it back to the planning, building and zoning committee with the, the zoning board's recommendations. Uh, just to go through just real quick. Well, I, was just, I was just wondering why if you were going fishing tomorrow that you needed a can of worms opened or what it was, what the reason was, because we've done this before a number of times and I uh, haven't had a chance to read it all, but I hope it's not going to be like it has in the past. Uh, no, like I said, currently the regulations state no commercial vehicles whatsoever in a residential district. In, act in actuality, it also can be interpreted to state that there's no RV vehicles permitted in a residential district. When we do get complaints on these types of vehicles, we do look at them on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, but again, the, the inconsistencies that there are in the code, where one section says you, it's an outright prohibition and another section says unless you have a home occupation or something else, it creates some conflict and some controversy over how we enforce these codes. Um, so what we're proposing would be a uniform treatment of vehicles across the board based on size, not based on weight, not based on type of vehicle, to be honest with you. It would just barely be based on size and just uh, going through real quickly, um, some of the types of vehicles that would, we have a maximum height, a maximum width, and a maximum length in the code. And currently, like this vehicle here would be, the proposed language that we have is seven feet tall. This vehicle is 9.4 9 feet tall. So this vehicle wouldn't be allowed due to its height. You know, obviously here's a, a situation where a, a dump truck, obviously height, length, and width would probably not allow that to be kept in a residential district. Um, this type of vehicle, again, for vehicle height, vehicle width would, would not be a permitted uh, with the current regulations. Again, height, length would not be permitted in a residential district. Again, same issues. Um, you know, is that a commercial vehicle? Is it an RV? I don't, honestly don't know. I, uh, it would probably be more of a commercial vehicle than anything else. But uh, again, for height, this would be something that would probably not be permitted based on the regulations that we're looking at. There's a, a typical service van or cargo van that would be permitted, um, but we also do put some stipulations in here as to commercial trailers and recreational trailers as to where they could be parked and stored. And in this particular case, that would not, the way that that, via, that trailer is stored would not be permitted. Excuse me. Yes, sir. That's more than, that, that truck is more than seven foot high. Actually, That's the- that new Dodge. Correct. What's that new Dodge truck? It's seven foot. Uh, I'm sorry. The uh, the Dodge. I looked at the specifications of it. The, the roof line itself is seven foot. The where the, we also do make a stipulation in the code for if you do have ladder racks or or storage racks on the top of the vehicle that there could be an additional height. But uh, I did seven foot. 
And let's, uh, we'll double check the specifications Alderman. on that to make sure that typical vehicle. Alderman Colts. Oh, that was just, just yeah. Which, Again, yeah. this is just purely what we have before you is really just a, a concept. We're not looking to say that the, the ordinance before you is, is perfect in any way, shape, or form. And we'll, we'll definitely discuss this out if, if the council wishes to, to provide us the direction to go forward with this. Yeah, we, it, are, you, are you basing the height on garage? Height size or, no, or the, what? The, the height of the vehicle is purely ground to the top to the roof of the vehicle. Um, Why did you pick seven foot? Because it's a, a, a pretty standard height for a for a van. Uh, a pickup truck is under seven foot. Uh, a, a, a cargo van, the typical dimensions on that. I was looking on the Chevy website and the Dodge website, uh, getting the specifications of their vehicles. And I'll have to double check on the Dodge, but it did appear that seven foot fit the standard cargo van height. Now you're talking about outside parking, not in garage. Correct. Correct. We have given out variances for taller garages in seven foot. Correct. Okay, go ahead. Uh, this type of vehicle would be permitted. Again, the, the other regulations that we put in that we're pr proposing in this would be is that the parking, if it were outside of the garage, would have to be in the side or rear yard. And if it is not possible to do it in the side or rear yard, then only would parking in the front yard be a, be permitted. Um, this is a type of vehicle that would be for height would probably fit it might be too, a little bit too long but with the extra things it has on the side uh one of the regulations that we're proposing is that there wouldn't be extra uh, materials and that stored on the side of the vehicle so that you know it's a minor thing the shovel there but uh it would have to be removed if this were allowed and stored in the vehicle here's the the situation i was talking about where the gentleman works for a hvac contractor under our current regulations he cannot bring that vehicle home technically um i don't know if that's good or bad or 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 what but that's just the, that's a typical service van that we're that these regulations would permit um again there's a concrete i believe it is a uh, truck has the extra storage rack on the top nothing on it uh, except for the cooler again that's a minor thing that we could get them to remove but uh, those are the types of vehicles that would be allowed these are the types of vehicles that people have to bring home when they work in construction or in the service industry another aspect that we've been getting a lot of complaints on that we quite honestly don't have any regulations in our code to even really regulate them would be as limousines uh, the current the way we're proposing it right now would be as that would be classified as a commercial vehicle and would have to fall within a maximum length of 19 feet, six inches, which would be a Lincoln town car. If you had a Lincoln town car could be permitted there, but the stretch limo would be prohibited. Again, same thing. We're also looking to, for some regulations or some standards for recreational vehicles uh, as to maximum height, maximum length, and again, location as to where they're parked. This, these are the types of things that we see in the community and we, you know, are these acceptable? Do we need to lower the height requirements in our RV vehicles? Do we need to increase them lengthwise also? Um, so that that's just where we're at and the, the types of calls and concerns that we get that on a daily basis that quite honestly, sometimes we can't give a, 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 a quick answer to a resident when they call in to say, is that allowed? Uh, we do believe that if we had some, some clear cut definitions and, and regulations in our zoning code that we could uh, have uniform enforcement across the community that we believe will be fair to everyone in the community. So you're you're saying that we you're asking us if this should be sent back to the planning and zoning board. This would go to the zoning board of appeals for a text amendment hearing because it would be a text amendment to the zoning code. And they would make any changes to it and Correct. send it back to us. Correct. Um, Alderman, please. I'd rather not get into a discussion about the particulars tonight. No. It's just going to take time, and the zoning board, the planning board will Just do a that. question. We got the zoning rewrite going on right now. Isn't that? Just as a similar nature, the, the, we've had other issues that have come up that have been felt to be priority. With the number of complaints the, that we've been receiving and, and inquiries we've been receiving into these types of vehicles, um, we need some guidance and some direction from the council, and we need it now. Alderman Lewton. You're just asking for guidance and direction. So I would like to give you some guidance and direction, but it's not an order to do it, nor is a recommendation, but simply for you to continue your research and come back with your analysis. The first thing is, 
The state of Illinois has laws that regulate license plates. They follow an, an, alphabet, an alphabetized sequence. Mm -hmm. They're, they start with B plates, go to C plates, D plates, and in the insurance industry, after, a, after an H plate, you fall into a different category of insurance. I think, and I'm not making a recommend, I'm, I'm recommending that you do research. I'm not making a recommendation that you make it, that, that this is a decision. But at what plate level can you tolerate a vehicle in the driveway? And my recommendation on that is this would stand, the reason for my recommending this research is it would standardize it would standardize the decision and the decision would not be made by us it would not be made by you it would not be made by the citizens it would be made by the state of Illinois we would be following their exact codes that they have right now Except, you know their code is for for weight and for taxation but we would be using the same exact identical system to determine what vehicles we'd forget about height we'd forget about a shovel on the side. We forget about a van that you showed us that if you put a handicap sticker on it, might well have been used by somebody who needed a lift. Simply stating that you, at some rate you say that's the limit. H plate, whatever. I'm not telling you H, but study what, what would fit into that category. And the second thing is tell me where they're going to park the vehicles. Where you want to put the parking garage for the free parking for the people to put their other vehicles that they don't have any other place to put unless they want to go out and spend three or four hundred dollars a month for parking at one of the places like on Powis Road in West Chicago, which is a little bit far to ask them to drive to come back home. And these are these are things you can talk to the planning board if about. I could, and also, if I could on that one, uh, I don't think through we, my experience, I don't expect uh, yeah. we need an answer. No, you well, want to. Actually, I have an answer. You want like things one. for directions. I, I have an answer if you'd like one. Actually, no, not tonight. Okay, Alderman Cadella. I'm in agreement with Mr. Clicker that something needs to be done so that council staffs on the same page. That anybody that calls in, either complaining about a neighbor or anybody that calls in asking for themselves, can I do this? So that there's always there's always a hard answer, easy to come to. That's not going to really require much, if any, uh, personal judgment on any of the staff. So, yeah, I'm I'm in agreement that this should be pursued. I'm not even going to give my 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 opinion on what and how, um, but something something should happen, and we should come to an agreement, and and staff should know you know how to how to act from here. I also am in agreement with Alderman Lewitton on. Uh, the fact that uh, positioning on the property uh, should be a part of this. Um, I guess that's all that's appropriate to, dis to say tonight. Holman Winger. Thank you. Um, a couple comments and then a question. Um, as far as getting into the details, so I fully expect that the zoning board will work through that with you, so I'm not going to call out anything specific. Um, also, in, in agreement with Alderman Lewiton, on, it would be interesting to see if we could monitor this by the plate codes of HG, whatnot. Um, so it'll be interesting to hear that discussion. In question, the, the, the proposed uh, wording talks about um, streets and residential areas. So what happens when we try and implement this on an area that has a private road, but it's residential? Would go to back to any kind of uh, anything actually on the street would be police enforcement, and again on the private road would go back to the uh, police enforcement of if there is a, a shared agreement on that. If it doesn't have, if there isn't a police agreement, uh, it, in my opinion, it would, and this would be a question for legal counsel. But if it is on a private road, it would fall into still the regular uh, regulations regarding zoning that we have on, in place. So, so in other words, if there's no agreement, then then the road portion wouldn't apply to to this. Correct. Okay, thank you. And Alderman Coles. I got one question. To get back to Lewiton's plates, there's some vans that have RV plates on. That's, and it's some window vans that have regular car plates on. So you gotta be, you gotta be a little careful. And the only way that can be caught is if the person is using it for a business and has RV plates on, then they then they can then they should get them people because I know of one offer that does that right now. 
and I've got calls from the neighbors saying, when are they going to straighten this thing out? And it's never been. So, okay, that's all i got to say. Okay, our recommendation then is to go on to the planning board and uh, board talk board. to them about it and come up with some answers. I'm sure they'll be happy to hear right. that they're going to be talking about this. Thank you. Uh, items to be considered at future meetings. Number one, tree preservation ordinance. Number two, the dumpster storage enclosures. You've been talking to the chamber, I hope, about that. Yeah, Mr. Forrest can give you a quick update. I had contacted uh, the Chamber of Commerce and Mr. Forrest actually had a meeting today with them. So I'm not sure if you want the update tonight or we can just talk about it at the future meeting. No, for, at a future meeting. You can, we can talk individually if you like. Anybody else have anything, any items for the future? If not, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Against, motion passes. I'm calling to order the uh, Public Works Committee meeting of June 26, 2008. Will the minute taker reflect the same members are present? I declare a quorum. And next item is approval of minutes of June 12th. I make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item is a report and recommendation on the holiday uh, decorations. And we did receive a report on this and it looks like uh, proposals were reviewed with uh, the company of Meeting House Companies Incorporated being the preferred in the amount of $14,821.71. I do have a question, uh, Mr. Mermis, what do we get out of that contract? You can keep it high level, but just some kind of um, explanation of what we'll get for our almost 15000 Yeah, we actually get signif a significant amount more than what we've uh, displayed in the past. Um, for instance, they're going to line all of City Hall with uh, the white light, uh, white light bulbs on the top. Um, the lights, not that they didn't look professional before, but they're going to look very professional now. Um, there's added areas. They're going to also decorate the area adjacent to Christie's Triangle. Um, uh, where the wind sculptures are. Um, they're going to do the clock tower area. Um, Shirley, was there any other areas that... Uh, a significant amount more than what we typically do. Please, will the city still do the bridge, or are they going to do the bridge as well? They're going to do all the setup, and we're going to do all the removal. Okay. So, uh, well then, wait, we're going to remove everything we're that, that remove, they put on top? We're going to remove everything because it's a significant uh, cost savings okay. for us to do that. So we let the professionals who set this up all the time set it up, make it look nice, and then we can take it down. And, and do we actually, the cost of the product, is that included in the contract? Was that the, the, yeah. We have a lot of the supplies already. Oh, good. Okay. So it's... Kind of Minimal, wash. if yeah. anything. Okay. Lights aren't that expensive. It's more the the installation work is very timely. The labor. Okay. Time consuming. Thank you. Anything else on the question? Okay. I make a motion to uh, make a recommendation that a contract be awarded to the Meeting House Companies Incorporated for the not to exceed amount of $14,821.71. Is there a second? Second. second. Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item is important recommendation and Parkway Tree Ordinance. And this is a recommendation that Alderman Kadala has been spearheading, and I believe it's also his passion. And he, he's been working with, uh, with committee as well as staff and uh, trying to come up with a um, a good parkway tree ordinance. So what I'm going to do is I'll hand the, the floor to Alderman Kadala at this point. Uh, thank you, uh, Alderman Winger. Um, we've had this for a better part of the week now, so rather than going through everything, I just want to briefly discuss the, uh, the changes to the ordinance as it's drafted uh, that I, I would like to at least propose. 
Uh, more in keeping with that original two and a half page uh, document that I drafted almost a year ago. Um, first and pretty importantly, uh, I was pushing for a maintenance schedule of sorts, um, be it five year or 10 year program uh, where the trees are assessed much as I think we did in, in the fall. I think we're still waiting to see the, uh, the results of, of that survey. Um, but you know, a, a period of time, whatever seems appropriate to the professionals, that parkway trees be be looked at and and be you know maintained, pruned, um, and, and whatever else uh, needs to be done. This I think this talks about storm damage, but I'm talking about just regular tree maintenance. Um, next, um, under section 6.602, uh, paragraph B, where it talks about uh, removal of uh, of dead and diseased wood from Dutch elm disease. Uh, it, it may just be a text issue. It may just be semantics, but I would really like this to read very specifically that all material should be removed from the property. I've, you know, I've even recently seen trees, elms cut, uh, and then the uh, they're chipped, and then the people want to keep their wood chips. But that's you know that's a breeding ground. The smell of of American elm to a possible uh, elm beetle um, that's going to attract it to potentially healthy trees. So if if the tree is diseased or if it either falls into the category of elm or as we'll see in section 6.604 ash i would really like it to read that all material should be removed from from the site um and maybe it needs to be in another section because i think it should be done regardless of whether the tree is diseased at that point in time or not the way the insects find the trees is through the smell um so that brings us to 6.604 same thing paragraph b I would really push for it to read once again, remove all material from the property. I think that's the best way to blanket statement it and and uh, and you know keep it with the intent of uh, not uh, not spreading disease or potential disease. Uh, on to section 6.705, planting parkway trees and shrubs. Uh, paragraph B uh, on page five. Statement here about uh, how trees uh, will not be planted on parkways less than 14 feet between the property line and the curb or edge of pavement uh, where there is no sidewalk. Um, you know, certain trees I think would do fine in 14 feet, and to say that we're not going to plant any in a 14 foot parkway might be too restrictive. Am I reading that right? Trees will not be permitted on residential parkways where there is less than eight feet between the sidewalk and the curb. That one maybe I can understand, or edge of pavement, or less than 14 feet between the property line and curb or edge of pavement where there is no sidewalk. Maybe you can't plant an accolade elm, but you might be able to plant something else, if I'm reading that right. Correct. You are reading that. Okay. Correct. Okay. Thanks. Um, I guess since I have the floor, I'll call Alderman Police before I continue. I have a question on that sidewalk. Being that sidewalks are going in in some of the areas... But like in front of my house, I mean, the sidewalk was there, and the tree, the tree was planted after the sidewalk. We don't have no 14 feet. I think it's like 10 feet. I mean, we're okay there. I think if it's existing. Right, but I'm saying, we're, like last year, we put in a new sidewalk, I think, on cedar or something. So I'm sure we went around some of those trees, and, you know, it might be 8 to 10 feet from the sidewalk to the curb. I think what we're getting at is we want to make the, the verbiage a little less uh, stringent, maybe loosen it up uh, per, you know, staff discretion or, you know, make exceptions depending on the species of tree or something like that. Some some language to that effect. Is that correct? Yeah, that's where I'm going. I mean, I'm not against staff discretion. I mean, we your staff is here because you're professionals and you know what you're doing, but wherever council can help with the direction and get it in writing and documented, I think is is ideal. So maybe maybe that eight foot is the magic number. Once again, the proper species can can fit in an eight foot area. Uh, next is the uh, maximum spacing on the trees, uh, which is same page five, right about in the middle. Um, large trees over 40 foot at maturity, I would push for 40 foot apart rather than the 50 as the max. Uh, for medium trees over uh, 20, from 20 to 40 feet, I'd probably want to push for around 35 or so for the maximum distance. And for small, maybe bring that down to 30. But I think the minimum spacing is pretty appropriate. Um, 
The next item that I have to question is this, the paragraph right underneath that section. Tree planting location stakes must be placed by the property owner and checked by the city of Wooddale before a permit is granted. Stakes shall indicate the species and mature size of the tree to be planted. Why is the property owner choosing the placement and not staff based on the way we draft this ordinance? Do we know that? I think we would hope to at least get homeowner insight into where they would like it placed. If obviously it's in a location where it cannot go, I think then that's when staff would intervene and then obviously go back and follow these minimum maximum spacing. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Just to clarify, isn't the property owner the city of Wooddale if we're talking about a parkway? I assume you mean the adjacent property owner? I guess I was more uh, inquiring as far as homeowners and their input on the tree placement if we are placing the tree in a parkway in front of a homeowner's residence. But the way it reads is the stakes must be placed by the property owner and checked by the city, but that's the same person. We are the property owner of the parkway. I believe this is in reference to if the residents want to place a tree in the parkway and they're the one requesting the tree there and they may place one out for our approval. If Maybe I'm, you're not getting what I'm saying though, but the property owner is the city. We can tighten up the language. I think the intent of the paragraph is to say that uh, both parties, yeah, well, both parties are going to work together on the placement of the tree with the city superseding anything that the resident may suggest that would be inappropriate. Okay, did, was there any hands up over there on uh, Alderman Police's side of the table? No, I only, I only have a question on something that was already covered, but we'll wait till you finish. Okay. Um, page 6, uh, let's see, that would be section 6.706 under paragraph uh, B. The second, uh, the second paragraph underneath B, removal of parkway trees. Um, talks about how trees can be removed uh, if they if the roots have resulted in recurring sewer blockages. Uh, we began to talk about this almost a year ago when this first came to the committee, and I remember even talking with Alderman Wesley about it. Um, a mature tree could cost thousand or fifteen hundred or even more potentially to totally remove and and stump grind. You might be cheaper than that to re-sleeve the clay pipe and then save the tree. I wonder if that is a direction that council would at least consider a possibility of, you know, spending the city's money that way rather than with the complete removal. And now I'm going to go to Alderman Wesley. Are you, are you saying that if, if, it, if that tree is interfering with the, the person's plumbing, that we are paying for a residential plumber to repair the pipe knowing that it's our parkway tree that has been doing the damage? It, is, is that what you're referring to? Well, the par this paragraph says that if it's already proven that the tree roots are the cause of the sewer blockage, however we got to that point, that's for staff to determine. Right. It, it's, it, it also alludes to the fact that, yeah, it's the city's responsibility to remove the tree, and I'm just suggesting an alternative way to spend money and save the tree. Because if you, if you sleeve the clay pipe, I believe you can resolve the problem. Perhaps our building department uh, uh, member might be able to at least validate if I'm close to being accurate or not. John? I was just going to, before I pass it over to Mr. Forrest, I was just going to say that once again, we could be a little bit more lenient with the language. And if, if that situation is plausible, we can put language in there to you know, say whatever option is cheaper, whatever option the city, sta city staff seems more appropriate for that situation. We can just put that in. Well, well, once again, not to not to take decision making away from staff, but since we've got the golden opportunity here, we're creating something from nothing. Maybe we can nail it now. And and in some cases, it may cost more. But once again, it's up to it's up to the council to decide collectively what's what's more important: um, the parkway tree and the aesthetic, or you know, or the possibility of a few hundred dollars one way or another. And I don't know that my numbers are accurate. No, I would agree with Alderman Kadala. That's I mean, if if, if it's going to cost fifteen hundred dollars to remove a tree. It's going to be a mature tree. Again, we have to go back conceptually. What do we want to try and accomplish here? If we're going to spend $1,500 to remove a tree, or if we can spend $1,500 and correct the problem with the sewer line, you know, then there's our aesthetic question. What do we want to do? 
Alderman Police. I understand where you're going with that, and you know you might save five hundred dollars by moving the pipe, but then we just have a little problem with uh, 